All right, so we are talking about Oh, we did not release. So we did the 0.3.6 release. Um, and now we're talking about um, oh, the, how to connect the data flow. OK. So um, for NLP demo data flow, um, an input comes is string from Input, uh, what is that operation called? Oops, oops, oops. Accept user input. So from accept user input, oops. Uh, how do we get it to um, model predict? Okay, so. So, so I, I made a PR, so I was just uh, converting it to yeah, dictionary, okay. and then it's working properly, but that's not a good way. Okay. I'm just using ASP.literally well, and it's just like that. Oh, you. Yeah, I haven't. Uh, I have written this. Uh, should we use a literally all? Because I tried and it's working fine with the with that thing. But we need a dictionary at the end of the day. So that's that's what I need. Train. Yeah, and actually we talked to it. Let's see. Okay, features. Okay, Actually, I, 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 I didn't know that you you are just planning for this for an LP, so I did it for uh, this uh, scikit thing. Yeah, that's okay. Why don't we do it with scikit first, and then we'll do another one with NLP. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so I see what you're saying. You're saying, like, okay, when we get the number in, obviously the number is, uh, is going to be a string. Um, yeah. And so you need to use that. Yeah. Okay. We're gonna need an operation to do that then. Um, yeah. So uh, yeah, you just make another operation um, and have it be the you know have it do literal eval on whatever the input it is. Um, so let's see. Okay. Uh, so yeah. So let's say make another operation. Probably this is probably a good one for I/O as well. Or you know, oh, it's not really I/O. Like maybe put it in like. Uh, what do we got here? Uh, what do we have for the operations these days? So it's like a data. Um, data is kind of very undescriptive, so maybe like convert.py or something like data, or data file slash um, slash uh average. can we write pre process um, uh, no pre process uh, pre process stuff you want is that reason, like, uh, yeah. or i mean that could be that could yeah be, that will be a yeah good. that could be good. yeah uh, pre process um and uh, for the literal eval operation Um, okay, and then all right, and then we need to so I'll put this here and I'll put it in the meeting minutes too. So we need to make this operation. Um, then you're gonna want to use the let's see, you're gonna want to use the mapping one. So mapping dot create. Um, so I want to use so take okay sorry I need to blow my nose here okay um so then you want to take the um so you've got accept user input um you've got Flow, 
So user input input data um, is the features. So what you need to do though first is you need to run it through literal input, right? And yep. then you want to run it through this create um, mapping. So so for the flow for the flow um, have uh, or so connect. Um, model prediction. Oh, hey, come on, click. Prediction. Dot features to um, zero or two. What is this? Stuff? Well, dot mapping dot create. Um, Static on the microphone. I think. Yeah. Hashim, can you mute your mic? Great, thanks. Um, let's see. So, yeah, you want to connect this. Connect. So then you connect dffml.mapping.create uh, value to um, the, you know, the literal eval. Um, and then connect the key to um, let's see yeah, you connect the key to or so feed or add add some seed uh, value as the key and connect that um, oh so oh this is another thing um so in this case, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to say, um, you're going to want to add a, and this is like something that we've been, let's see. So you're going to want to add to the seed an input, add to dataflow.seed, and input, input with, the origin equals um, c dot feature or something, um, and use let's see, connect this flow here. It's going to look like you're going to say. Um, you just put the string, so it ends up being like c dot feature. All this stuff needs to be documented, which is the problem here, is that it's not documented. Um, so. Obviously, okay, we've got multiple of these, right? Um, we've got like a bunch of things they need to input. So, um, for the sake of the fact that this is an example, um, I think that we should yeah. drop this down to use a simple linear regression um, because then you only have one input. And that way, it's because or else we have to do the input thing multiple times, and that's going to get start to get more confusing. And since this is supposed to be a demo, um, that won't really be a good. It won't. That that will be a little bit too complicated, and, and we have a lot of little bit too complicated things right now <laughs> as demos. Oh, okay, so okay, okay. so let's go ahead, yeah, and drop this down to to just use the simple SLR stuff. So. Uh, Okay. Okay. So uh, I will just make a model for which it just takes a single feature and works on it. Okay. Right. Well, so we have this. Um, we have this. Oh, why is there no? There's no docs for it. Um, oh, damn. Damn. Did I screw it up when I moved it? 
Yeah, I screwed it up. Okay. Um, yeah, we have the the Scratch SLR model got moved into the FFML, so this is a problem. God damn it. Uh, okay. There's no docs for it. Um, okay. So we need to make an issue for this. Um, somehow we got rid of the docs. So, model. Yeah, so this is basically the, if you go look at, I'll just put a note in here. Um, so, change the demo to use the SLR model in DFML dot, let's see. SLR. Here. So this got moved and it needs um, it needs okay. documentation. So model SLR. So need Python and C examples. Documentation. So now we got that issue, and we got that. All right, so change the demo to use the SLR model. Um, that way, um, it only needs one piece of input feature data. Sweet. Okay. Uh, other than that, it looks like you got everything on the right track here. Um, let's see. Uh, Is there yeah, anything else? Yeah, yeah. It looks like uh, so far. Uh, no, not this. And uh, you opened an issue regarding TensorFlow Hub, right? Uh, I will check it tonight. Uh, if oh, I haven't okay. got time to look into. Cool. Yeah, no worries. That's. Uh, it looks like. Uh, uh, yeah, there is something off in there. Sure. Uh, yeah. So it looks like. I'm not sure what's up. I mean, it's yeah, saying uh, no input repos, and I'm wondering if something is spelled wrong or something. But it's like the CLI demo works, right? Yeah. So. Yeah, um, yeah. I will check it. I will check. It's weird. All right, cool. Uh, thanks. Um, let's see. Yeah. So, um, anything else then on your front? Uh, mm, no, nothing else. Okay. Yeah, and um, that was the. Uh, uh, um, your podcast was really cool. Yeah, congrats on that. All right. Hey, yeah, thanks. Uh, yeah, then uh, that's it from my side. Thank you. Cool. All right. Thanks so much. Uh, okay. All right. So who else? Uh, who else is on the call? Who wants to? Who wants to talk next? Yeah, John, am I audible? Yes, yeah. Hey, much better this time. How's it going, Hagen? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I found it on the microphone. Yeah, right, great. It's that I can't get no mic since I can't go out. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, like, uh, I saw that get multi is up. I'll change the assertion statement once that's much. Like, is it complete or? Do I have to wait for so it? this is this is so what I was thinking here, and I was yeah, this is what happened. Sorry, I was trying to put up uh, Git multi so that we could actually grab out the. Um, uh, so the reason I put that up is because. Uh, da, 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 where is it? Okay, so. It runs, right, but we're not actually, like, programmatically asserting that stuff is output. Um, so we yeah. probably need git multi to capture all the results, right, and make sure that they, they got output correctly mm -hmm. and they yes, all are that, there. Like, that's what, yeah. Yeah, which I know you had said that. That's, yeah. I that, saw that. Yeah. Yeah, I saw, I saw that you had had that message, so I was like, okay, let me put it in there. But the thing I ran into now, and the reason why I didn't, I should have said this, um, there's been a lot going on, but, so I added the example, I added the example usage, um, so change git multi, basically, and then, and then get single 
just extends from Git Multi. Um, and okay. for some reason, what happened? Oh, you know, maybe that was never mind. That was probably what happened. You know, I think I think I was like I was testing it and I was writing this doc test for it, and it didn't work. And then oh, I think so what I realized was, the doc test. well, the doc, the doc test, test works now, but it didn't. So I was like putting in the URLs, and I had git multi dot spec, but then I had git single. I think I had dot auto git single, and so I'm pretty sure it was just. Uh, and then I was like, it doesn't work, and then I got all word that I broke it single, but now I'm realizing I just put in that wrong spec, and so once I fix it, it's probably right. So I just want to put in the other doc test here, and we'll merge this, and then, uh, yeah, I was doing too many things. Um, but so, let's just say on async generator operations 4, so 4 async generator operations, um, uh, We'll merge git multi, uh, use it in async uh, generator PR to grab all output, uh, what was it, counts? Um, yeah, that count. So let's grab all the, or let's see, what's in here? So yeah, let's, we want to grab all the count, uh, right? So. Because those are the ones from the async generators, so we want to use it. Use it to grab all out, all count um, and check that everything expected was output um, when data flow ends. Okay. Um, so yeah, basically, and then once we do that, I just, we, the tests don't really test much right now, right? Like nothing's going to break if it does, it won't, it doesn't, it doesn't oh, sort of, yeah, right, so we need that. Um, and then that yeah, and also I figured out the other thing, it was just that since we were, uh, all the sync operations were, sorry, not the sync operations, the operations without input now, like they were uh, set off before we, all the inputs set get notified. So that's why earlier it was created. Yeah, that's why it worked when we swapped. That's why it worked when we swapped. All right, so wait, can you say that again? Yeah, like, uh, just a minute. Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, so like earlier, the input network wasn't notified when we were adding operations without inputs because it was after the input set get notified so when i swapped it those work so ah was i see okay great so this is. this is more of like it's something that, that would have been a problem anyways so no, yeah. so, so let's can you comment in here and write that um just so that we have a record of it yeah okay, okay. I'll do that. I'll do that. great thanks um yeah because that that's that's important, as you know. Like as you're going through the memory stuff, um, the thing is, it's it's like it's kind of hard to hard to, hard to wrap your head around like all the stuff that has to be moving asynchronously in there. So it's it's I would, yeah. it would be great if we have it all right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, sure. great. Um, and then I think we'll be good here. This will be great. Um, and then let's see. And then you, you know, I mean, you know your next steps after that, right? You're just gonna, you're gonna do the, the Gator demo, which yeah, uh, like, bef uh, should I work on the Gator demo or the one which you mentioned, the HTTP one? Uh, uh, the H, which was the HTTP one? You mean like the stuff that we were. Oh, oh, the data flow stuff. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you know, I was just I think, thinking because Hamanshu is doing the, uh, like, he's kind of close I, to that anyways right I'll now. I'll join you in five minutes because my network is not, okay. oh, I'll just relocate. Yeah, let's just assume do that, do that uh, deployment stuff, yeah. Uh, sorry, I'll join yeah, you in no five minutes. That's... My network is breaking. I'll just relocate and call you. Cool, thanks. Okay. 
Okay. Um, so who else is on? Hey. Hey, hello. This is the Hanshu here. Hey, how's it going? Uh, okay, so, so uh, I actually made some changes to the uh, pull request which I made earlier. So, oh, yes. Uh, maybe if you can review it. Yes. Did we merge that TensorFlow one? Or, oh, this height of Python prompts. Uh, ah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. that Great. TensorFlow one was merged. Great. Uh, the the uh, hiding of Python prompts, yeah, yeah. Okay, good. I did. I wasn't sure if I finished my reply here. That's okay. Um, da, 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 da. Yeah. It works. All right. John, is it audible now? Yeah, it actually works. Wow. Sweet. This is great. All right. Yeah, this is awesome. Um, let's see. Yeah, that's probably some. Oh, did you run into that? Let's see. I wonder if you ran into that too. Um, Copy button. Perfect shot some. Perfect, perfect, perfect. All right, so what's well, the stupid test? Or did you rerun and it worked? Or, let's see. Model TensorFlow. Oh, okay, well, it's modern. It's the TensorFlow stuff. Um, da -da -da -da. It's always a stupid initialization. All right, you want to scroll to the bottom? Come on. Uh, oh, we're really going to stop all oh, thousands of these repos. Uh, okay. Yeah, okay, whatever. Um, files change. Let's, yeah, let's get this. Uh, oh, this is great. Thanks for doing this. Okay, thank you. Yeah, this is, uh, this is awesome. Let's see. Does it create this static directory if it doesn't exist already? Or I guess it must because it didn't fit. Uh, so actually, in uh, the uh, pages directory, which gets created from the dot slash uh, scripts <coughs> and docs dot sh, so from there the static directory is already present. Oh, okay, great. So I'm actually downloading the, uh, the copy button file directly to it. Right to it. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. All right. Um, oh, here's one thing though. We do want to tag this. So if we, or what's going to happen here? I guess if they update copy button, our thing is going to break. Uh, but that's probably good because we want it to be updated too. So usually we want to pin this to the um, the last commit um, because uh, then it's always downloading this version. But I actually, I actually like this better. Because if they ever update copy button, then we'll want the updated copy, and we're not going to know about it until the CI breaks, and the CI will break because the shasam will break, and then we'll know that we need to go update the shasam. So that's actually that's actually a good better way to do this. Um, so let's see. All right, let's merge this. Great. Thanks for doing that. That is great. Squash and merge. Um, fixes. Oh, it's like four thirty-eight. Oh, this is going to be great. All right. Here we'll hide in Python. Sweet. Thanks. Do you have anything? Um, Let's see, let's make a notes in the call. So, I got reading of Python prompts for box site. Great. Um, and then, what else have you been up to? Have you, uh, are you looking for more stuff to do, or do you have, do you have stuff that you, you've got? You've got sort of like forecasted. So uh, actually, on. I'm uh, looking in the issues tab for more issues. Okay, cool. Um, let's see. Um, well, this would be a quick one to knock out that um, 
lacking documentation, uh, you know how to add the documentation for them. Um, and actually, you know how to do it with the tests, so that would be good. This is actually not an extra small test. This is small. Okay, I would start with small. Yeah. So it's extra small. Is it's not, it's not that short, um, but this would be a good one. That would be great. Thanks. Uh, let's see. It's very important that we have that. Um, so, and then let's see. Um, what else do we have here? Model predict usage example. Um, let's see. Let's see. Want you? Amashu, were you going to do the model predict usage example while you're sort of doing your, you've got a few things, test cases that have now used it. Um, can you go, do you have time uh, to go at it? Yeah, 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 I think I, think I, will, I will jump onto that. Great. Yeah. Great. Okay, so then you'll do that. Um, rename to relational data size. Uh, explain input origins. Let's see, what do we have? Well, I guess yeah. You've been you've done some of the example usages, and if you can keep doing more example usages, that would be great. Um, because you know we have the CLI stuff, and you know how to convert it to the to the okay. testable example so, as well. So that would be really great. Yeah, yeah. So, and I think TensorFlow Hub is okay. actually the, so well, I'll so, start working on both these issues. Yeah. So this one currently actually is um, this one is actually. Um, the same issue as is, let's say that this is related. Um, so I would stay away from TensorFlow Hub right now because this is kind of what's going on here. Um, is, uh, this guy was saying that, that he tried to use it, but he couldn't figure out how to use it. Um, and then I couldn't figure out how to use it. Um, so Hamachi is going to, to, to help us figure out how to use it because we're, we're doing something wrong. Um, so once he figures that out, then, then it's, it's, it works from the command line, so obviously it works. Um, but we're just missing some kind of variables or something. So we need that. He, he needs to give us that example before we can do that. So let's just say um, reading, reading on working minimal. Python example um, and issue blank and then that when once that's done then you could do it. Um, let's see. Uh, and then the other one was oh, I lost my issues. All right. And then the other one it was what it was like the that, that other scratch model. So one of the scratch models ends up now being this top one here, this model SLR last documentation. Um, but then there's also this, um, this there's another model in scratch still um, that someone added recently that was like uh, with some kind of optimization, same linear regression with some sort of optimization. Um, let's see. And so let's just list these in the meeting minutes. Uh, so, uh, uh, for so for model examples with testing still needed. Right, yeah, these are very important because people come on and need to be able to copy paste the. Uh, they need to be able to copy paste the code for Python and for the command line. And then this guy. Okay. Alright. Sound good? Is there anything else? Or I mean I guess we could we can always resync next week or you can uh, on Gitter if you if you need some more stuff. Let's see. Okay, so uh, that's all from my side. Great, cool, thanks. All right. Yeah, welcome. All right, hey, how's it going, guys? All right, who else is in here? Let's go next. Yeah, it's on. Uh, hello? Hey, yeah, Hagen. 
Oh yes, that's right. You were gone, and now you're back. Yeah. Um. So you say we're okay. So this. Let's give a little more. Huh? Most complete. Say again. The NLP one, I think Himanshu has almost done it, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, Himanshu's like which we are planning. I think Himanshu has almost got it. Yeah, exactly. So we'll just you'll 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 that that'll, yeah. that'll be good to just leave it there. And Himanshu will will do the NLP stuff after after he does the um after he does that that one with the simple linear regression, then he'll do the NLP because he's already all over NLP stuff. So that just sort of makes yeah. sense. Um, so this what's going on here is. And like after we maybe swap the input one with the one which gets the messages exactly exactly it'll be more of a so that's exactly and so once we have that that's like sort of a basic here's how you grab input feed it through a simple model now here's how you grab input in a more complex way feed it, feed it through a more complex model um, so yeah and so let's see um model predicting for usage okay um where was it going with this? Oh, we were talking about this deployment stuff. Um, all right, is this the main issue? All right, so here's the deal with this. I got to thinking um, about, you know, how easy is it, like, that, like, you know, a large part of this is, is this has to be, we want everything to be very easy, right? Okay, so, well, how do I, how do I set this stuff up at this point? Right, and well, you need to run you you need to run it behind like if you wanted to run some data flow, you'd run it behind the HTTP service, and there's sort of like a minimal example there showing that. But this could be more uh, fully featured, right? Um, ideally, what we have is basically um, with the creating new operations, right? So if you if you create uh, a set of new operations and you you know you make some data flow and, and now you want to deploy that um you likely want to deploy it behind some http server right um and so well how do you usually deploy things you put them in containers um so actually this might not what's this over issue uh, i might have just Let's see. Um, where did I go with this issue? All right. So basically, the idea is we want to have. Where did my issue go? Where should go? I talked about whatever. I swear. I had this documented somewhere. All right. Um, basically, the point is like. We want to add some parts of the tutorial that show you how to write a Docker file, and then the Docker file just installs. It basically you start from the base image, and um, you install uh, pip, or you install Python, you install pip, or you just start from the Python base image. That's fine, right? Um, you could install. You, we could probably start off just starting from the main DFFML image, but we're gonna want another one that that shows how to demo. Uh, let me write some of this stuff down. So deploy. Uh, project on uh, GitHub. Uh, goal. So the goal here is to make it super easy to take operations slash data flows and have them uh, be deployed somewhere. Um, all right um and so okay, so first first off we need an example uh or a tutorial where we um we need a tutorial where we show how to make a docker file uh, which builds a container image. Container image uh, for uh, some data flows slash operations created with the DFML service dev create operations command. 
Um, so we have this demo Docker file. Now we show show how to, um, and then we show, or basically now this is now this is the part where this this webhook service comes in. Um, so this. Oops, oh, well, this is what I want to do. So, webhook service. Um, so, basically, I don't know if you guys have seen this before. Oh, I can't show it on this repo. Um, let's see. Uh, hub.com slash funny slash HTTP test. Here's a good example. Um, so, so with, with GitHub, GitHub, you can put into the settings a webhook URL, um, and basically what that means is like every time uh, a webhook is is like um, a webhook is basically just like a some kind of blob of data that gets sent to some service when something happens. Um, and so for GitHub, you can say, hey, when I push to my repo or, you know, certain things happen to my repo, like this is like issue comment, create, delete, um, branches and pull requests and push events get sent to this web webhook. Um, I think, well, let's just look at it. Um, uh, all right. um, so you'll say how you want it, right? Do you want it as JSON or do you want it as, as form encoded? And then you say what kind of events you want, right? So it can send you all sorts of things or it can just send you everything. Um, and so what we're doing here is we're basically waiting for um, push events. Uh, we want to wait for push events. Um, and we want to have this webhook receiver understand how to receive push events and then how to look at the Git repo and say, okay, do I have the same branch checked out that got pushed? All right, if I did, then I want to pull that down and rebuild that Docker container automatically. Um, I want to rebuild that image. Um, so webhook service listens for push events from GitHub. Um, oh, you know, honestly, wait a minute. Actually, now that I'm thinking, thinking about, about this, why don't we, we just, just have Docker, Docker Hub build this image? image. Um, Docker Hub's for building images. Can we get can we get webhooks from them? That would be great. Uh, uh, for some reason, I was like thinking we needed to build it. Why do we need to build it? They build it for us. All right. So Docker Hub will build images for you if you tell them about your Docker file in your Git repo. Um, and for example, if you look at, um, let's slow it down. All right. Um, oh, well, I guess it went away. There used to be a CI thing that shows that it built the image, but it's not. If this ever wants to load, we'll show it on here. But either way, so we're going to create this webhook service. It's going to either listen to GitHub pushes or it's going to look listen for. So this is for push events for GitHub, and then rebuild Docker image, and then rebuilds Docker image. Or if we can get push, or if we can get build notifications from Docker Hub, Hub as a webhook, we can just listen for those and uh, pull down and docker pull down the new image uh, when it's been built by docker hub um all right so the next step is we have the webhook service somehow trigger the redeployment of the container image. Um, so now what we need is like, 
we need we need to we're probably going to make plugins for this right because at this point um you know we love plugins plugins are great um so we're going to have options for things like the first one we're going to do is like okay regular docker right um so you just look at all the containers on the machine right and this web that service knows um, which ones are of this, or you, you look for the image type. Um, so let me, let me just say, uh, create plugins which know how to redeploy for different deployment uh, scenarios. Okay. Deploy. Okay, I can spell that. Um, then, because people have all sorts of ways of complaining, deploying containers for Docker, just like plain old Docker running on some host is going to be is going to be enough of the way that we can uh, that we will have made the use case of I make some operations. So basically, we're going to have this. So we're going to create plugins for de deploy in different deployment situations for Docker. We just look at running containers. Um, if any of them are, uh, any of them are of the image type that, or of the image which was rebuilt, redeploy them, rerun them. Docker, way to call that. Um, later, we can implement uh, alternate uh, uh, redeployment plugins for different uh, orchestrators container. Or, oops. Where to go? Okay. So now the result of this is going to be um, sort of like an extended tutorial to creating some operations where you say, okay, we've made some operations. Um, now you push them up to your GitHub. Now add this webhook. You know, now on your server that you want to run these operations, you start this service, right? This webhook service, and then you configure. We show how to configure GitHub to point at the webhook service, and now every time they update their operations or their data flow, they get redeployed on their server right away. Um, and so this way, we're making it very easy to, like, you know, take the stuff that may, may be running locally on their computer, and now all of a sudden, whenever they push into GitHub, it's active at some new URL, right? And so this this is like this will this will result in like really quick development of new stuff, you know, like. Because uh, imagine, imagine you you have some app that you're working on, and I mean, there's lots of ways to do these things, right? But this is this is sort of the way that we're trying to do it. Um, and so, you know, if you were using like Google Compute and stuff, or like AWS Lambda, you would go into Amazon and configure all that. But we're being an open source alternative to those things, right? So, uh, you know, you're like, I want to use my model, put it at this URL path, put model predict at this URL path. And then if you change anything, it rebuilds, re-uploads. It's all good, right? Um, so that's that's the idea behind this whole deployment project on GitHub and the tags. Yeah, that's cool. Sorry, I can't hear you. It just works that way. That's cool. Yeah. 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 I, I was like, yeah, it's cool. Like, yeah, they can just swap any modules. And the data flow will still work. Like, yep. Get redeployed. Exactly. Work. Yeah. Just basically, all we're doing here is is sort of like tying things together. Like this this is the goal of this is just tie things together for you know the last sort of mile where it's like okay, well now I have this stuff. It's real easy. Like it, it makes sense how you run it on the command line, right? Um, or run it within Python um, soon once we have a little more tutorials here. But then to, to have it deployed behind something, uh, some you know like. To have it be on some web server somewhere where other people can access it, right? That that will be helpful to people. Yeah. Um, yeah so let me know as you go if you 
you know how what how it's going with that. If yeah, that's yeah. something that's something you want you want to try to work on. I like I'll start in two days. Cool, cool. Um, so who else is on the call? Who else do we have? Yeah, it sounds interesting. I'll start working on it in two days. Sweet, cool. sweet. Thanks. Uh, I'll be dropping off. I have a project meet to be okay. So, Sounds good. Have a good day. Yeah, you too. Have a good one. Thanks. All right, guys. Who else is? Uh, so I see we got Hashim, Saksham. Do you guys need to talk about anything today, or just join us to to see how it's going? Uh, yeah, I just joined in to see how it's going. Uh, right. I'm still working on the uh, a unifying configuration issue. Cool. Well, that one, I mean, ha. Huh. Yeah, I wouldn't not expect that to be done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot going on in there. Yeah, yeah. There's well, a thanks. Lot going on. Thanks for. Well, yeah, I know. I mean, so much of this stuff is like okay, we're doing a lot of stuff, but a lot of this is about like making all these different plugins that we work on work together, and then getting the. Yeah. I have doubled it and you adding pin statements everywhere. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. It's the configuration is actually a what large part saying. of this project. <laughs> yeah. Any questions uh, on it? I'll or... ask you any, uh, if something. Yeah, I'm just still figuring out everything. I'll ask yeah. you if, if something comes up. Okay. Yeah, that sounds good. So basically, I would say high level, like, um, and you may have seen this already, but so the if you look at CLI, um, the arg class is meant to sort of uh, uh, be the, the same, same type, type of thing, thing as an arg parse argument. Um, so it's whatever arguments you would pad to arg parse add argument um, end up in this arg class, which is really like a dict or something, I think, if I remember correctly. Um, and so, uh, so then for the for the CLI commands themselves, um, whenever they have that argument defined, argument defined at the class level, that's like arg underscore something um, equals arg, and then it has the name, like the name of the argument with the hyphen, if it's supposed to be, a, you know, the hyphen on the path. Um, and so that's what the argument name gets added as. Um, and then it accesses it as self dot whatever that argument name is in the within the within like the run method of that class of that CLI class itself. Um, and then the thing is that so we took that and we extended it into like we tried to convert the config stuff because there was all the args and config and they were basically using this stuff. And then we made it so we could have those config classes, right? And when we did that, it instead of like, you know, arg underscore whatever equals arg now it's like okay, the config property name, um, like the name within the within that con that config class colon um, the data type equals the field, and the field is really just um, uh, is it? I believe I believe we're passing or well no we're extrapolating the typing information from the data type that's associated with it, and then I believe we build the args. Um, and then extract it from that extra config thing, which holds all the command line arguments not parsed by the top level CLI parsing, which are those ones that are arg underscore. So anything that's not an arg underscore, basically that ends up in that CLI commands self.extra config, and then self.extra config, all of the config structures, like all, or all of the plugins, when they're initialized, they, they're class methods dot with config is called and that as you can see in base in dffml slash base uh we've did when we did the auto args and config stuff like we auto, like we um we made it so that the dot config method the dot with config calls dot config and then we made it so that um it basically reads that, you know, all caps config config class, and it reads all the properties in that class, and grabs the data types and makes those arg, um, you know, the the same uh, arg uh, 
uh, the arg, word arg is overused here, but ARG with a capital A, those classes, it makes those and then does the, um, uh, does, grabs the argument data out of that extra config um, using that trans traverse uh, config git methods. Um, but yeah, so that's sort of, I mean, that's probably what you've seen, but that's just to reiterate at a high level, that's what's going on in there. Um, cool. Did you have any questions on anything immediately or just sort of like, it's all, it's all kind of a mess. Still got to get it all in your head. There's a lot of like uh, messy yeah, stuff to sort of try to shove in your head. Things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, yeah, once you've got it all in your head, then it's like, okay, now I can go do it. But yeah. That, that's why I'm holding off on doing anything. I'm just understanding mm -hmm. everything so that I don't get stuck and I have to go back and retrack everything. That's a good plan. That's a very good plan. Cool. Um, and then who else do we have on the call? Do we have Hashim? How's it going, Hashim? Yeah, can you hear me now? Yes. Hello? Hello. Yes, can you hear me? Hello. Can you guys hear him? I, I can, can hear him, him but uh, yeah. uh, He's probably got uh, you know. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yeah, so uh I've been uh, studying data flow and uh, trying to make uh, the operations work, a workable example for the operations. Sweet. And uh, oh. I can't seem to really make something that works. Yeah. Uh, okay. I don't uh, totally understand data flow yet. Yeah. Um, so. I'm having some trouble because uh, there aren't complete uh, doc strings for that. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, so I'm gonna. So I'll actually just uh, like we were talking about a little bit earlier. Right? Um, it w or I'm going to add this uh, it's another output operation and so I'm going to add this quick little example for how this works and then I'll add another example for how this, this get single one works um, and hopefully that sort of gives you a little scaffold for like how do you set up an example for this um, but as far as the yeah like doing a complete example of how to get I mean so yeah to test the operations themselves you can usually do sort of like um it depends what they are right but so for example um where is our operation i wonder yeah like the create create mapping ones would be a good sort of first target here what else do we have yeah the array and mapping ones um oh i guess we didn't add array yet i didn't end up getting added um, so these are nice because they don't have config. Um, but then when you get into things like DB, that will have config. Um, but I think we have, we have an example from Model Predict, or well, Himanshu is going to add an example from Model Predict. So, so example doc strings for operations. Um, um, let's see. Da, 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 da. Okay. Um, yeah, okay, so DB. Let me just detail a few things here. Has database config will need to. Um, yeah, that'd be an interesting one because we'll have to uh, we'll need to use the SQL DB stuff. Uh, use or let me just be more explicit here. So we need to use the uh, DB. So 
we need to use this SQLite database with this one, actually, uh, with it. Um, check the, okay, I wonder if there's an example in the tests here. Test DB, okay, yeah, test DB was a good place to look then. Uh, is it a good place to look? No, it's source, okay. Uh, hmm. All right, there's an operation for testing, that's great. Yeah, okay, so check this out. All right, um, all right, but that one's sort of the more complex one. I shouldn't start with that. Um, so dfml slash operations slash uh, mapping. Um, in this one, you can basically do, and this one is going to need, um, let's see. Mm. Yeah, you can just sort of copy like the format. Um, okay, where it was? Did I not? We not have any of these. I swear we had one of them. That was like, no. Oh, we had run data flow, and that one's like stupidly complex. Um, okay. Or wait, no, we have the we have these ones. Great, perfect. Um. Yeah, uh, we have an IO also and run data flow also. Yeah. Test examples. Perfect. IO is okay. much more manageable here. Um, okay, so, let's see. Oh, and I think we want, uh, let's see. This isn't quite formatted as we usually would format it, so we should probably format that at some point. Um, Okay, it's uh, obviously, so black doesn't survive, provide support for this now, so it's kind of annoying, but now that we have a new copy-paste button, um, we can so copy the code here into a Python file and format it with black and copy it back. Um, Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. Um, where is where did we go? Oh, damn it! Go rid of my tab. Okay. Um, let's see. I think this is a good one here. So this one. Inputs. Yeah, so this is probably a good, good uh, example of, of like what you could do with the mapping and the um, and like the way you could set up the mapping and the database um, exam or uh, yeah, docs example docs. So, so good. Example is this guy. Um, oops, let me make this link a little more friendly here. Um, so a good example is that guy um, for mapping. Um, well, I don't really know how much more I can say on this code, honestly. Um, if you look at if you look at that example, um, and let's see, so I'll sort of just try to explain here, but so the way the data flow stuff works is, is sorry, go up my nose. All right, so the way that the data flow stuff 
here where as soon as we put auto, it tries to just like create a data flow by linking together similar inputs and outputs, um, like with definitions that are the same. Uh, and since we're just doing like one operation at a time, that's not really going to be something that we do. Um, but um, but so it doesn't really matter. So if we pass dot, if we just say data flow dot auto, it'll just create us a data flow with those operations. And so that's probably what you want to do in this case is you want to do that, just data flow dot auto, and you want to do whatever operation you have, and then you usually want you're probably going to want this get single operation, um, and the get single. Um, Let's see. Well, this, this one, one actually doesn't, doesn't even need the get single operation. Um, so let's also remove that there um, in that issue. Um, let's say, sorry. Yeah, I'll do it later. Okay. So you basically say, you know, the op so data flow dot auto, the operations you care about, and then that is the data flow. Um, and then in the inputs, so there's a couple ways you can do things, but the most basic way is you just put this, you make this array of input objects and you say, what's the value of this input? And then what's the data type of this input? Like what's the definition? Um, and the definition in this one is the, this data to print. Right, and so you can do um, something like you can do the state of the definition is that definition of print, or you can do um, you know I'm gonna change this to um, make it a little more explicit here. Um, so. We also want to change. Um, so this basically, dataflow.definitions is all the different types of definitions in the thing. Um, but uh, where'd it go? But we, we can, can also, also access, access it as uh, this print output dot inputs dot um, data. Oops. Dot. Oops. Wow. Okay. What happened here? Sorry. Data. Uh, Um, so you could you can do it either way, um, but this way you sort of get a little more. It's a little more explicit here for the example. So that we want the definition, which is the the data input, right? So if we look at data, it's data to print, and that way we don't. If we change this, it doesn't matter because we might change this at some point, and therefore um, you know we're we're doing it by this this guy, um, and. I guess, I mean, you could change it either. either way. It could be a problem if you change it, but this sort of just lets you grab it um, from the explicit, like, we are sure that it is this input right here, the data input that we're talking about. Um, so the value blank is going to the definition that will be this data input. So you know it's going to end up here. Um, and so let's see. So that's basically the way this works, is you basically just make this array where you say here's an input object um, and here's the value and here's the definition and you don't have to say parents equals none. Um, we can probably remove that. Uh, let's see. Let's see. It's not required. Um, the parents thing is just so that you can track um, what inputs led to the creation of this input. Um, so, um, for example, like, uh, so as these, as your, 
with, with the data flow. Let's see if I can bring it up to a little data flow intro. This will become, I've got one that's, that's in the works that will make this really apparent. Um, but not at the moment. Yeah. Wow, my internet is being slow today. So, essentially, the, the purpose of parents is to track um, what sequence of inputs led to the creation of this input. Um, so, you know, if an operation was called and it was passed two inputs and then it outputted, it outputted another thing, the output ends up being called an input again because it's going to get used as an input to something else. Um, so that input was generated with the parents being the two arguments that were passed to the operation, right? Um, and so that's why we have parents. So we don't need to, it's by default, it's set to none. Um, so one, two, three, four. Let's we'll just do this four at it. One, two, three. Um, okay. Um, so basically, what you're going to do is you're going to have this pattern where for each operation you're going to create the data flow where you pass in the, the operation itself. You create the inputs which match the inputs to that operation. And then you do this little block here. Um, this little block is going to be the same as async def main, async for context results. And then you probably just want to print out um, results. Um, oh, and the last thing here, and then you do the run, and whatever you print in results is going to be. So this is the other thing is you usually are going to want to use this get single. Um, and this, this is... Uh, in this example, the reason why we didn't need get single is because we happen to actually be printing stuff. Um, so we can just uh, uh, we can just define um, basically the way that the doc strings work is it just looks at what gets printed and it compares. You know, when you hit this line, when you run this line, what are the things that got printed as a result, right? So with this particular example, the point is that it's going to print something. So um, this ends up working here. We don't need get single really. Um, usually we need get single um, because, for example, with this one, um, you push, you add, you say, I want this operation, and then uh, it doesn't actually take any inputs. Um, so you didn't have to, we didn't have to add any, um, we didn't have to pass in any inputs in that array there. But we do usually append this seed. Um, and we don't have to do it that way. You can just add this input to the um, to this array, um, but you need this input that is of the spec input for the get single operation. And the get and this one, this is one of those where it's like, I'm that's that pull request. Is how I'll put up the actual documentation for get single. But what it does is it basically just says, okay, um, the the definition that it takes is this spec and the spec has the value should be an array of the names of the definitions that you want um, to get one of those of right so if i have a data flow generates a bunch of data and all like and and a bunch of those input datas have definitions which match this input the get single operation will return one of them one of those inputs, and the get multi operation returns anything matching that definition, uh, any data matching that definition, right? Um, so that's the, and basically what you usually need is you usually need, like for this one, we say, okay, well, we want get single, um, we, we want to run get single as the operation which produces the outputs, and the outputs are what gets stored in results here. Um, and so we want to say, okay, the output should be, um, uh, basically, we're telling it that we want the output of the data flow to 
be the result of running this get single output operation. And we want the get single output operation to be returning to us one input, one piece of data in the network that had a definition matching the definition of this accept user input output, um, which is this, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, yeah, user input, right? So this definition of user input is input data in the output dictionary of this operation. So the name, the dot name here is user input, right? Because it comes from here, because it gets set there, right? Um, and so that's how basically we, you know, we use, we use the operations for everything, right? We use them to decide what gets run in the network and we use them to decide um, how stuff gets out of the network. Um, so you're basically going to have this pattern, and this might be a better one, except for the fact that you didn't. Um, in this, this is happens. This is one of those cases where it doesn't have an input. Um, so you're going to need to sort of combine uh, the knowledge that you get from synthesizing the two of these uh, examples together to create the examples for like the um, uh, mapping one, um, and because you'll you'll end up with okay, I have to, I I need my get single spec, right? Because I need to get the output of those those new maps that get created, the new dictionaries. Um, and then you need to pass your inputs to the um, the inputs that are actually going to go to that operation as well. Like, for example, with the, uh, um, uh, yeah, with the mapping operation, there's like key and value. And let's see. Yeah, so if you're going to create a new dictionary, basically, which is also called a mapping in some languages, um, then you're going to pass the key and you're going to pass the value. Um, so those are going to be two of your inputs. And then you want to have git single grab this mapping output here. Um, and then you'll just check that it was, you know, you'll, you'll have the, the statement at the very last line, which is, shows you that, you know, the... Uh, the output you were expecting is what you got there um, as a result of doing the git single and, and this thing that was created. Does that make sense? Do you have enough to run with there? Uh, yeah, actually, uh, my internet isn't that good today, so okay. I'm missing most of it. Okay, but, well, uh, I'll go through the recording. Yeah, and uh, I'll get back to you. Okay, that sounds good. And then the other thing is that basically, um, yeah, you can always ping me on Gitter, right, or ping anyone. Um, and uh, and so the last thing is with the so mapping will be sort of the one that that you want to start with to get your feel for it. Um, uh, start here. Start here. With mapping, uh, and then. Then do DB, um, uh, and so with the database, the database stuff. Then you'll want to look at the test case for it as well. It's going to help you figure out how to do the config. Um, but yeah, cool. All right. Um, is there anything else from anybody? If not, we'll call it call it a day. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Thank you. This will be great. Have we're steadily all of a sudden we've we've been steadily adding to those operation examples. I think that's going to help people get the data flows a lot more too. Let's get the one-off examples on the operations and build some of these more data flow uh, demos. It's it's the data flows are are uh, a, n a novel concept. I mean, there's a lot there's some a lot of other projects out there these days that are trying to do something similar to that. Um, there's many people trying to figure out, like people call them workflows, people call them data flows, uh, but this is like everybody's trying to. Lots of people are trying to do stuff like this, so it's it's like a, it's a weird, weird concept that we're all trying to. Everybody's trying to figure out a good way to do. But yeah. All right. Cool. I will see you guys next week then, and stay healthy, everybody, and good luck with school stuff. I hear that um, people are getting pretty hammered pretty hard with uh, with universities trying to throw them a bunch of online work. So, good luck. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a good one. Bye.